This year marks the 700th anniversary of Dante Alighieri's death. Pope Francis says the Italian poet's works embody the ideals and values of the Catholic Church. In an apostolic letter, the Holy Father highlights the timeliness and the depth of faith in Dante's masterpiece, The Divine Comedy. He writes, the works of Dante take us back to the Christian roots of Europe and the West. Joining us now to talk more about Dante is Elizabeth Lev, our historian and author. Liz, great to see you again. Um, so tell us, why does Italy celebrate the day of Dante today? Well, they decided last year, it was a decision made in January of 2020, to dedicate a day of the year to Dante. And beautifully, wonderfully, in an Italian fashion, they chose March 25th. And there's several reasons for the March 25th. One, of course, is the Annunciation, which in Florence was the equivalent of July 1st. So the year began in Florence at the time of Dante. It began on the 25th. But even more to the point of Dante is that the journey that he takes during the Divine Comedy to the Inferno, to the Purgatorio, to Paradiso, starts, according to scholars, on March 25th, which in the year when this 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 journey takes place would have been Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then Easter Sunday. So it's the beginning of Dante's journey. It's the beginning of the year, and it's also the beginning of the incarnation. What a perfect day. Absolutely. Um, Pope Francis in his letter today calls Dante, quote, a prophet of hope and a poet of mercy. Um, do you agree with that? And tell us if so, why? I, I agree with it entirely. I, I actually loved every point that Pope Francis made with that, with, with his with this apostolic letter today on Dante. I thought it was uh, not only the way he speaks of Dante as a poet, of hope. It comes after the section where he talks about Dante, this pilgrim, a man who is a victim of the political circumstances of his age and forced to wander from place to place, never really finding a home. And instead of allowing that to vent into a hatred of the contemporary world, Dante translates this into the spiritual journey. So that while this is a deeply personal journey for Dante, through art, through beauty, it becomes a journey we can all share in and universally as he struggles to find a home, which of course is paradise, back with God. So it's a, it's a wonderful way that Dante, uh, that, that, that Pope Francis holds up Dante struggling in a very brutal and divisive era as a, as a, as a poet who brings hope through beauty. There's not a lot of time left, but I'm wondering, um, how are the works of Dante, how are they still relevant today? I think Dante's work is particularly relevant today in many different ways, also in one sense spiritually, because Dante writes in a period of great crisis within the church, and in the Divine Comedy he complains. We see him criticizing the church very harshly, but as Pope Francis cites from Pope Paul III, we find out that Dante never shakes in his firm belief in the Christian faith. He never stops being uh, a faithful son of the church, and so that's one lovely lesson. And then the second very beautiful lesson is the way that in the midst of division, how language can be used to bring us together, how we should use communication as a form of beautifully talking and listening to each other instead of using words as a form of division. And that, I think, is a very pertinent lesson for all of us right now. Yeah, so important today, indeed. Thank you so much, Liz. Elizabeth Lev, art historian and author. Thank you again. Thank you.